everyone. Thank you for joining another webinar in our series. This one focusing on Adobe IO and Project Firefly. We have a guest from Adobe, Jeff Chasen with us. We're very happy to have him along with our Senior Director of Data Activation, Jerry Hulu, and John Paul Burins um, for Digital Analytics. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to throw them in the chat or in the Q&A. If it doesn't get addressed in the webinar, we'll either follow up with you post-webinar or we'll include it in the follow-up blog that'll be sent to all the participants of the webinar today. If you have further questions about Soft Acrylic or any of our services, please reach out to us events at softacrylic.com. And other than that, make sure you answer the poll, ask questions and enjoy the presentation. Thank you, Sammy. Thank you. Um, I, let's do a quick intro so that we, um, some folks might be joining this that uh, haven't heard me speak. Um, I'm Jerry. I lead the data activation team at uh, Subcrylic. Uh, although my team is uh, very much in, uh, mar in uh, marketing automation and in uh, the DMP space and now AAP, um, we collaborate a lot with the different practices within Subcrylic, especially when it comes around Adobe IO. So I invited our Adobe Analytics, our, our Analytics Sensei and a good friend of mine, JP, um, to this, because he's, he's been doing some amazing stuff. And I thought, well, both of us can um, can ask a lot of questions from, from Jeff. But JP, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. So I lead the digital analytics practice at Subcrylic. Um, you know, we help clients with, uh, you know, everything from Google Analytics to a lot of Adobe Analytics. Um, you know, from data collection, integration with other tools and, and reporting. And then this integration with other tools is what, um, you know, has led me down this path of Adobe IO, uh, me and, and my team. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, just like Jerry, I collaborate with the, some of our other practices, our advanced analytics practice or, um, you know, our, our data engineering practice. And through uh, engagements with, with clients, um, you know, we, we find ourselves building these, uh, you know, or developing these APIs, right? Uh, you know, through, through Adobe IO. And then we heard about Project Firefly, um, you know, and it got us really excited about the possibilities of, okay, if we have these APIs, maybe we can build, you know, some actual applications here, um, you know? And so, so I'm excited, you know, to have Jeff here and um, you know, just in general, we'll have this conversation. So really looking forward to it. Awesome. And Jeff, um, for folks who, who haven't seen you at Summit or haven't um, seen some of your, your posts on, on Medium or Adobe blogs, um, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell them who Jeff Jason is. Sure, thanks, Jerry. Uh, I'm a senior evangelist. I'm on the evangelism team uh, in the digital experience unit. Uh, so I um, am focused pretty much on early stage developer uh, products. So anything within digital experience, experience cloud, analytics, uh, Adobe experience platform, et cetera, um, places where our solutions and our technology stack connect to other systems and other applications uh, where developers get involved, that's, that's where I uh, tend to focus. Um, as, as JP was saying, um, you know, when you start to do integrations, um, Adobe will be the first company to, uh, to, to say that we understand that there aren't any of our customers that run exclusively Adobe products, right? Even, even Adobe, our own marketing teams don't run on 100% Adobe uh, technology. They use technologies from other vendors because we don't do everything. And we know that. So our technologies and our solutions and our systems have to interact and integrate with the systems um, and the applications from other vendors and those of our clients and our partners as well. Uh, and that's where I tend to, to focus. That's awesome. Um, Jeff, I know that in today's webinar, you're going, you're going to walk us through um, a little bit more in detail around how the program and the developer side has been growing within Adobe and how Adobe IO has expanded into, into the, the project Bar Firefly. And also you're gonna showcase to us uh, maybe a sample of uh, a project, project that you are developing in, in that environment. But before we get to that, maybe, maybe talk us through 
like I've I've worked with Adobe IO from my days when when I was at Adobe. You know, that, w- that was a while back. Uh, we used it to automate classifications. We used it to automate uh, pushing trades and segments into the DMP. Um, and and it was never. I mean, at that time, it was it was okay. The APIs worked, but they they always it was a struggle to get them to be fully reliable that we can put them in production because I didn't feel that was a big push from Adobe at that time, but that has changed. That has changed significantly. Uh, and now the, you see that API first has become the, the push and every product that new product that comes with Adobe or even the existing APIs have been upgraded um, to new versions that have much more support and expertise. Um, why? Why is what is it that Adobe is seeing uh, that that is causing this change and this concentration on on the developer side rather than the business uh, per se? Yeah, so that's a really good, really good question, really good topic, uh, Jerry. So uh, there's no real secret there. It's it's not so you know it's not like secret sauce or anything that the the company is you know hiding. Uh, we're we're pretty open about it as far as I know. Um, it, it, if you think about what's happened in the last three to five years um, with Adobe and then outside of Adobe, just in general with marketing and advertising technologies and different vendors. Um, it, it, Integration is 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 basically the be all and end all of, of what people have been working on, right? How do I get data from one place to the next? How do I make sure that that um, things like consent are taken care of? Things like privacy are taken care of? How do I make sure that the systems that I've put in place so far are not going to be completely hijacked by all the browser changes that have been happening uh, over the last couple of years? Um, The pace of change is just ridiculous. I mean, we all, everyone that works in this part of the web knows that saying that things change fast doesn't even scratch the surface. Um, And part of that, you know, if you think about Adobe and in terms of the change, um, the digital experience side of Adobe, the suite of products that we offer comes primarily through acquisition, right? These companies were acquired over the last X number of years And so internally, our own engineers, in order to really get them to work better as a suite of integrated products, um, what's the one thing they're going to look at, right, is services. And when you talk about different services and different applications interacting with each other, that's where you look to APIs. And so naturally, uh, things like Adobe I.O. uh, have bubbled up to the surface and and gotten more investment and more priority. Um, If for no other reason than analytics and platform had to talk to each other better. Uh, And the browsers and analytics had to talk better to each other. And systems that were developed independently when they were independent companies, now that they're part of Adobe and we're we're trying to to really build the internal glue and the under the hood glue between the different systems, a lot of that is accomplished through APIs, Uh, not only externally to the public, but internally between different engineering teams. So an example is I, I come from, uh, most recently came from the launch product team um, and launch was developed from the ground up as an API first product. The, uh, the user interface of, of that system only exists to give non-technical users a way to interact with our APIs, which exist under the hood. Um, and, and that's a very API first product. And then of course we have the evolution of Adobe experience platform which is a, a big emphasis and a big push for the company uh, because we know that customers are dealing with quantities of data that most of us have never even really thought about, let alone had to manage on a daily basis. And so with platform comes a, a variety of different services and applications. And, and I'll show some of that on, in the slides that we'll go through here in a second. But um, the internal technology stack, all of these pieces, if you think about the data pipeline, right, from the original source to the end report that you're delivering or the dashboard that you're producing or the application that's consuming it, that data every step of the way, you you have to make that as seamless and easy as possible. Um, And a lot of that uh, in the world that we're in today falls on developers, both with partners uh, and with our customers directly. Uh, So 
I think the you know the the transformation of Adobe internally with our own suite of products going from a situation where we acquired different companies and we had these different independent systems to really blending them together into one cohesive whole suite of products. You had that as a big driver, and then also the evolution of Adobe Experience Platform, which um, is huge for uh, both Adobe and for for our customers and our partners as a way to build on top of Adobe products uh, and customize and extend those products as well. I, I love it. Um, I, I'm now super excited to, to hear more about what you're going to present. So maybe let's, let's jump into that and then we can, uh, we can just get into more questions right after that. Do you, do you want to uh, share some of these slides, Jeff, and walk yeah, us sure. through them? Let Excellent. me go ahead and share this, see if I can. It's my first day using a computer, so I'm not sure if I'm going to do it right. Uh, <laughs> You're good. We can see it. We can see. Very good. Okay, so I'm going to go through these slides. I, I, I don't like slides just as much as the next person, uh, but you know, the I think I'm going to go through these pretty quickly. These are I'm not going to read them to to the group, but we'll go through just the key uh, points. And I think it's useful. Um, number one, to to figure out in terms of Adobe IO, where does that fit in? Like we were talking about, you know, in all these different pieces of the tech stack, um, where does that fit in overall? And then an introduction and a, and a quick and of Project Firefly and how that uh, is, is a new evolution for the IO team. Um, some use cases, just some quick ideas of, you know, practical things that have been done with Project Firefly and, and why companies are excited about it. Um, a little demo of a project you, you mentioned, Jerry, a project that I've been working on, um, and I'll, I'll show that. Uh, it's not finished, but I think it's a good look behind the scenes of what happens in a real project. And then if uh, we have time, uh, if anyone uh, has questions, we can do Q&A. Um, and if, if anyone has questions afterwards and wants to reach out, my email and my Twitter is, uh, handle is on the screen uh, there. You can screenshot it or jot that down. Feel free to reach out directly for anybody that has questions. And just also just to mention something that we will share this um, uh, most likely part or the whole webinar on our website uh, with information. So we will put a link, some of these information without your email. We're not going to put your email on the website, but we'll put um, that some maybe some of that content so people can access it. Cool. Sounds good. Okay, so there are a lot of moving parts in what we were in what we've been talking about, um, but just a quick look and sort of a layer, a, a tech stack or a layer cake, so to speak, view of things. Um, at a foundational level, at the at the base layer here, uh, down at the bottom in red, we have the platform. And for those that may or you know may be less familiar with platform, um, there are services that exist on top of a data platform, like real time customer profile for our customers that need to have things like um, real, <clears throat> excuse me, um, personalized offers, uh, right? Personalization of content, personalization of offers, and not just ads, but content itself, right? Um, how do you do that at scale, at, at the scale that our customers operate with literally millions and millions of customer profiles and, and in a way that's real time back and forth to the client or to your device? Um, AI and machine learning with things like Sensei and moving uh, machine learning um, and artificial intelligence out to our edge so that this uh, automated decisioning can be done at the edge um, in, in real time uh, at scale. Uh, the open ecosystem just is, is a buzzwordy say, way to say that developers can hook into our stuff and build on top of our stuff. Um, and then Project Firefly in terms of extending the actual experience cloud and customizing the functionality. And, and we'll look at, that's what this uh, session is about today. And we'll look at that a little more closely. Uh, and then on top of the platform, you have application services, intelligence services, and then also the solutions that, that most people are familiar with, with analytics, audience manager, campaign, et cetera. So just one sort of view of the world of Adobe things. And, and we know, and, and I want to acknowledge that we understand both at Adobe and with our partners and customers that this is not the whole puzzle, right? This is one piece of a client implementation. This is one piece of the data pipeline that I always talk about. And there are products from other vendors that will uh, be both on the left and the right and on the top and on the bottom. And so everything can interact uh, together. And, and these call outs are just the way in which our system does that with other systems. 
Um, in terms of IO itself, uh, Adobe IO, Jerry, as, as you alluded to, you know, it's grown uh, quite a bit. It's, it's, um, it's become a lot more popular now that um, all of this integration work and development work uh, and open extensible, extensible uh, connection points have been developed uh, across our solutions and across platform. Um, the Adobe IO website is sort of a, a gateway to the world of Adobe for developers. Uh, Adobe.io is, is where most developers will go to get started and learn about our APIs and learn about projects like Firefly. Uh, it also talks about our API gateway in which uh, our the internal uh, publicly available uh, APIs of Adobe uh, are exposed, uh, where projects are managed in the admin console. And we can, we'll look at that briefly uh, when we get into the, the demo. Um, and we also have Adobe Exchange, which is sort of a marketplace of different applications and, and Firefly applications are one uh, type. Uh, launch extensions are another example of the applications that you'll find on the Exchange. Um, and those are generally publicly available. Within IO itself, in terms of what are the, the, um, the products that, that most developers are gonna be primarily interested in, um, IO runtime, uh, which we'll talk about more in a minute, uh, is a serv basically serverless functions that you can access. Um, various SDKs that our engineering teams have developed to make it easier to interact with our stuff. Um, lots of helper libraries, which we can look at. Um, IO events for reactive uh, uh, projects, uh, event-driven projects um, that um, the applications that clients and partners are already developing. Uh, that have to react to different uh, state changes, uh, both in the real world and in the application, and how can you hook into those and leverage those to automatically uh, respond. And then um, something I think is, is really cool, I've just sort of discovered it recently myself as I got into this project, which is uh, the Adobe IO CLI, the, the command line uh, interface, which is uh, pretty extensive and, and pretty easy to approach uh, tooling, which I'll, I'll show you uh, in a minute about how to work with uh, these SDKs and work with runtime and events uh, from the command line in your own applications and, and how to get set up. So this is sort of like the, the overall you know, view of what, what is included in IO for now. Um, obviously uh, that'll be growing over time, um, but we're gonna look a little bit just quickly, uh, runtime and events. Um, it, it, there's a lot of buzzwords here, right? So forgive me for, for some of these, but we, we really haven't come up as an industry with, with um, you know, real clear cut, easy to understand terms. You use some of these terms with five people and, and you ask them what it means, you'll get 10 different answers. So apologies for some of the buzzwords, uh, but- um, the, Hey the, Jeff, the, before, before you go into this, I, I do have one question and on that yeah. note of, you know, all the different buzzwords, I think you you clarified something that I've always been you know asking myself, um, which is the difference uh, between the market, uh, was it the exchange marketplace, the launch catalog, and now potentially you know this Firefly catalog of extensions. So is the exchange marketplace the entity that houses all of launch and pro project Firefly extensions? Is that how it's going to work? Yeah, so that's a that's a sore spot for me, JP. That's that's I'm I'm glad you brought that up, but but I I I, I wish I had a better answer for you. I, I I have the answer, but but I don't feel really good about it because I know it's it's not the ideal experience for our customers and our partners. Um, we, we have different catalogs, right? If you if you think about Adobe, like the okay. Magento is a perfect example, right? Uh, Magento, the the commerce solution that Adobe offers. They have a catalog of extensions for Magento stores that, that people operate. And, and that's sort of, you know, in the Magento marketplace. And then we have this Adobe Exchange thing that I had on the last slide, um, which, you know, is like you said uh, over here is a list, a marketplace of applications uh, that, that does not currently include those Magento extensions. It does include the launch extensions and it does also include uh, Firefly applications uh, if you make those public. Okay. Um, but Adobe knows that that's suboptimal, shall we say, less than ideal. Uh, and, and lots of different teams are working together to figure out how can we uh, give people a better experiencing, experience when they're approaching our quote unquote catalog of applications. Uh, but Adobe Exchange is where you would go to find out about uh, launch extensions. It's where you would go to find out about um, other extensions like some data connector projects and Firefly applications. Right. 
some other things. Um, it, it has a pretty uh, robust search mechanism. So if you go, you know, Google Adobe Exchange okay. and you search for an application, um, it, 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 uh, the, the apps there are tagged pretty well and they come up uh, pretty well. I, I have myself have pretty good luck finding apps that are listed. Got it. That, that's something we know we okay. need to do better. Yeah. Well, but for the purposes of Firefly, we can find Firefly applications through the exchange once they're public. So uh, Firefly right now, I, I guess I, I, before we were, were so jump the gun just a little bit, but, but with Firefly itself, okay. it's currently in a developer preview uh, stage. It, it's right, not, right, right, right. It's not right. generally available yet. Um, so some of these decisions may change and some of the way these things work may change, but Firefly is uh, based on an organization and in Adobe that's a small white lie, but that's basically a customer, right? Most of our okay. customers only have one um, organization, so to speak. It's sort of the top level of a customer account. And so Project Firefly um, is authorized at the organization level. So for example, if you have a customer that you're working with to develop a Firefly app, that app will be available to anyone in that organization. Okay, right. So, so uh, they'll see okay. it you know, as, as one of their apps. And I'll show you what that looks like in a, in a minute. Okay, uh, well, I'll let you go through it. No, no worries. I appreciate it. It's a good call out and, and it's something that we're working on to improve the customer experience and the developer experience. Um, so run to get back to runtime, as we talked about, these are basically, you know, uh, it it's, gives you the opportunity to run serverless functions, uh, to run actions in, in uh, Firefly, and I'll show you what that means. Um, there are a lot of built-in conveniences, uh, like developers like to say you get free stuff um, there are a lot of things built in, for example, working with IMS, which is our identity management system for authentication is much easier when you're working in, in Firefly using some of our SDKs. Um, you can do things like data decoration or data manipulation on our servers without having to provision your own backend stuff, which is really handy. Um, in the, it, it, from the Firefly context, for any folks that are familiar with sort of React development or Vue.js or any sort of um, uh, single page application type development where you, you're working on a front end and then on the back end you're making API calls or you set up like a little express server or you, you mock your, your API calls. Um, runtime is basically your back end in, in the Firefly world. Um, three of the paths that exist for extending Adobe products. Um, to give you an example, JP, like some of the apps that you might find, you might find data connectors. Uh, third-party apps, which are available through the exchange. And then uh, uh, you might also have uh, Firefly apps, which when you log in, like an example, you'll, you see the little catalog of cards for those uh, Firefly applications. And we'll look at that more in a minute. Um, it, Firefly is really a way to extend the cloud and extend uh, the Adobe Experience Cloud and the Experience Platform. Um, it's a framework to build apps, uh, either headless or full uh, single page application excuse me, with a user interface um, using a command line tool and the admin console for Adobe IO. So you basically are, are starting with the admin console and the command line interface. Um, then uh, we have um, visual editing uh, capabilities uh, with Visual Studio Code. We have a, a plugin and extension to make it easier for folks to use that editor and work in the project. Um, and then all the way out to the custom app being displayed as part of your Adobe ecosystem. And it lives in the experience cloud. Um, it's typically for either enterprise developers who exist within our customers and partner organizations or systems integrators with, with a variety of vendors that need to integrate with various Adobe products. The, there are a lot of pieces, I, I call them the Lego pieces that you snap together to build your app. Um, it's not quite that, that straightforward and easy, but it's, it's getting there pretty quick. Um, in terms of a front end, you can do straight up HTML and CSS and JavaScript if you want, uh, or if you want to do some sort of a single page app, um, we offer uh, both the Spectrum CSS framework, which is open source, as well as React Spectrum, which is a component library if you want to use a, build a, a React-based uh, user interface. Um, we talked about the command line tools, the SDKs, the runtime, and the events. Um, and that is a way to interact with our cloud services and our developer tools to, to build your application. Um, 
So Spectrum is our design system at Adobe, uh, the Adobe Experience Cloud and the platform, the user interface when you log in uh, to an Adobe product, uh, the user interface, the views that you see on your screen in your browser, um, those are uh, created and designed with Spectrum, um, either Spectrum CSS or React Spectrum uh, as a component library for React. But it's, it's how we implement our design standards uh, through CSS and our, and our components. Um, and it is available to the public at spectrum.adobe.com. Uh, we also have React Spectrum, which is the version of that if, if you work in React. Um, this, the command line interface we talked about, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, let's see, Adobe IO, uh, the console, we'll look at that in a second. That's where you basically start your project and you set up a project in the developer console, uh, and then you continue it on your command line. Um, the enterprise deployments are, are, is a nice thing to call out because once an application is created for an organization, it's available to anyone who has rights within that organization. Um, so, you know, utility things and dashboards, uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the use cases, but all of those can be available to all the uh, authenticated users in your organization. The idea is that we're trying to make some things that are pretty challenging. Uh, we're trying to make those much easier uh, we're trying to put pretty everything you need that we can think of that you might need uh, in the box. And we're trying to make it extendable so that as your needs evolve and as you develop your applications in version one and version two, et cetera, uh, that, that you can expand and extend um, as needed. Uh, in terms of a tech stack, um, this is... Let's see, so Firefly app and, okay. So in terms of the app itself here on the left, this Firefly app, you see um, if you have a front end system, if you have a user interface on the client side, then it's, it's generally going to be a single page app with React Spectrum or just plain HTML and, and, and CSS and JavaScript if you prefer. And then the back end uh, is going to be the IO runtime and the IO events. But part of that bundled in is you know, this sort of free stuff or these niceties, nice to have that we have. Um, there is data storage and file storage. Um, and we have a, a, a CDN for, that serves your static file. So your app actually lives on our infrastructure, not yours. So you don't have to provision and maintain a whole backend system. Um, that's already set up for you. And then it gives you access, a little bit more streamlined and easier access to the public APIs for the various solutions. And then of course, any third party APIs, like my app that I'm uh, working on, it interacts with Twilio to send uh, text messages. And we'll, we'll look at that quickly uh, at the end. But in terms of the developer experience, um, we, we have a visual, uh, we're working on a Visual Studio plugin and extension uh, and, and Visual Studio code and extension to make it easier for code completion uh, and uh, linting and that sort of thing. Um, the JavaScript libraries are pretty extensive, the SDKs, um, to interact with the Adobe APIs and the various services. Uh, there are some built-in debugging tools, which are pretty nice. Uh, the command line, which I'll, I'll show you in a minute. And then in terms of deployment, we can hook into um, um, continuous integration, continuous development using GitHub Actions and GitHub Secrets so that you can make this part of the typical development workflow that, that you might, some folks are probably used to. And then in terms of operating the app, um, we can provide usage uh, analytics and monitoring for performance and, and usage st stats. Um, it, this is a, getting back, JP, what you mentioned in terms of where do you find your, your stuff. Uh, when you log into your, the Experience Cloud on the homepage, you'll see a card that says Project Firefly Apps, uh, if your organization is entitled, uh, is part of the program. And then when you click on that, your listing of apps will show. So for example, in, in this organization, these are the Firefly apps that have been enabled. And so you click on the card to access the app. So this is sort of an organization specific catalog of your Firefly apps, custom for your, your org. Uh, we have a lot of enablement assets. They've done a really good job with the docs. Uh, if I can understand the docs, then that means they're great because uh, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Uh, and I found the docs very accessible, uh, pretty easy to follow. Um, there are uh, videos coming, uh, screencasts, webinars. There's a full training program that's in the works uh, as well. Uh, we have code labs for Spectrum uh, and for React Spectrum. 
uh, and for uh, I/O runtime, etc. So you can get your get your feet wet, uh, dip your toe in the water, so to speak, and and uh, in a very um, guided manner. Uh, and then there are demo apps like the one I'm working on. There are other apps from customers and from internal engineers to demonstrate some of the capabilities and get you thinking about how you could use this in your own situation. Uh, let's see. So here's a use case uh, that that is that is uh, live. Uh, this is sort of a tech diagram uh, of a dashboard, a real-time dashboard uh, that that covers content. Um, and gives an organization a real-time view over which content is, is, is effective and how that content is performing in real time for their specific needs. Uh, in terms of the, the, custom, the tech stack, the customer has a data source which comes in uh, to the platform in real-time streaming. Uh, so data ingestion through uh, real-time uh, streaming. There's a data inlet URL and then uh, various internal mechanisms and platform make that available. Uh, to the services and to the applications, uh, also to I.O., obviously. And you have events, I.O. custom events that can listen to uh, the experience platform pipeline. And so as that data comes in, if it meets certain business rules or requirements, um, then your application, your custom app, your Firefly app can act on it uh, because it's hooked in directly to the I.O. events um, and, and any runtime actions that you might need. Uh, and then it's available to your application. And then from the application can be sent out uh, as needed. Uh, and so in this case, this screenshot down here on the lower right is, is a, a screenshot of the actual dashboard that folks can log in and look at their content in a way that's most valuable to them and most specific to a particular campaign or a particular content um, or audience or, uh, or whatever it is that they need for their specifics. Um, so this is just sort of an overall view of how the tech pieces, the Lego pieces, as I call them, fit together. Um, as I mentioned, it is a developer preview. We would love to have you join us. Um, this link, uh, these links uh, will be available, uh, I believe, in the, uh, in the Zoom, and uh, they'll be provided by um, uh, for any attendees and anyone watching the recording. But uh, this um, type form, Adobe I.O., uh, right here, uh, is where you sign up and apply. And once uh, your, your uh, application is processed and your org is provisioned, um, then you can access our support forum, uh, which is here. Uh, we have a community in our experience league specifically to help. Uh, we do have engineering help available as well because this is a developer preview and we know it's a little bit early days. Uh, so there, are, there is uh, engineering help available for you if you need to, to get started, if you have a use case that you're thinking about but you're not really sure. Uh, let us know and we'll be happy to give you a helping hand to get started with the project. So I um, wanted to jump in, do a quick demo unless there's questions uh, that you want to stop for, but, but uh, happy to, to go into the demo. Let's go for the demo. Let's go for the demo. Okay. So on the left, uh, I've got my browser and on the right over here, I've got VS Code, just my text editor. Um, and so on the left, you see I'm in the, the repo for the docs. Uh, the docs also exist on uh, Experience League on the Adobe site. Um, I just have them bookmarked here in the repo, but um, this is just an example I wanted to show in terms of creating your first application using some of the built-in tooling. It's super easy. I mean, even I did it, uh, which means it's definitely easy. And so you follow these few steps to set up your local environment with Node, et cetera, your local, local tooling, you sign in, um, to the developer console and then uh, on the command line. Uh, you can bootstrap the application using the command line tool, which gives you, um, walks you through some questions and answers, which I'll, I can show you uh, if we have time at the end. And then gives you some templates so that you don't have to start from scratch uh, with your project. So this is a real great uh, start um, to setting up a project and figuring out what it's all about. Takes you step-by-step -step through it. And then in the uh, developer console that I talked about uh, before for Adobe I.O., console.adobe.io, sorry, console.adobe.io, talking too fast, um, is the developer console. And that's sort of the gateway to a lot of these uh, services and, and these applications. And one of the sections here are your projects. And I have a project here that I've created this pro Firefly notifications project. So if I click on that, let me make this a little bit bigger. 
so we can see what's going on. Um, you see that uh, Firefly gives you uh, a development, uh, different development environments. Um, it comes out of the box with two stage and production. I added a third, which was dev, because I know I make a lot of mistake. Uh, I write a lot of bugs before I write code. So I like to have a dev environment to play with as my own little isolated environment. And so if I click on that dev workspace, now the products and the services and the credentials and all the things I need for my project are all here. Um, I, I needed access to the launch uh, API because I'm working with, with launch in my app, uh, the platform API and uh, my actual project. Uh, Adobe IO automatically creates these, these sort of um, pseudo uh, random uh, project names. So this secret Dwayne Indigo is not something I chose, um, but that is the uh, project uh, that's set up. And we also have credentials. So when you create your IO project, um, you often will interact with Adobe APIs uh, and, and uh, other pro products with uh, JSON web tokens, or uh, you set up a JWT service account which gives you um, a public key and a, and a private key. Um, and, and you can use that key to, to exchange uh, for a token. And those tokens, uh, one of the SDKs is a, what they call a token vending machine because these tokens expire uh, it, usually every 24 hours. And so it gives you a way for your application to, to update uh, and refresh those tokens uh, in a pretty straightforward way. Jeff, I have a question. Um, those projects that you've shown um, once you create a project, you cannot delete it, or, or at least I haven't figured out a way to delete it. Is that something, is there a reason for that? Or is it just like right now that's the state and that might change in the future? We want to make it as hard as, but no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> so some projects can be deleted uh, if the authentication and the services have been removed from those projects. Uh, like, for example, with the launch API, if, if you have credentials and you delete those credentials, then you, you can delete that. So, for example, my launch extensions uh, that I have for the catalog, if I deleted the service integration uh, and all the, the parts, basically, of my project, then I could delete that entire project from the admin console. Got it. Okay. Uh, so I would delete my products and services, delete my credentials, and then I can delete the whole thing. In terms of Firefly, um, it currently, because again, it's developer preview, you can't delete a, a Firefly project, but you, you will be able to uh, before we get to, to GA. Cool, thank you. Yep. Um, so where, oh yeah. So if I go to my dev workspace uh, and I go here into my little project, you can see I have a few actions that are defined. I have a Twilio action, and this is a, an IO runtime action, which is basically uh, set up a function on this, which runs on the server. So when I call out to that action, the action says, okay, here's what I'm gonna do when you reach out to me. And I have a Twilio action, and I have a launch callbacks uh, webhook. And I'll, I'll show you what that, what that means in a second, but there's a secure an HTTPS and an HTTP version of, of each of those. Um, Okay, so if I go back to dev, that, that's all that's, that's under there uh, in terms of IO. But this is you know, where you'll start uh, your projects. And again, if you come back to creating your first app, you set up your local environment and then you set up the project in the dev console, which is uh, what we just looked at. And then in terms of the, I have to get rid of this Zoom thing is blocking me. See, I told you it's my first day with a new computer. Okay, there we go. So, um, and this is the, the IO console. In terms of the command line, uh, there's a repo, this AIO CLI, and that's also in the docs, which are linked uh, in the Zoom. But um, the command line tooling is extensive. Uh, and so in terms of getting started, you can reference those docs, which we just looked at, but there's a long list of commands that give you access to a variety of built-in functionality on the command line. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of thought and care went into this. Uh, it's, it's obvious from working with it. And I, I for one, uh, really appreciated uh, this, uh, the conveniences that this offers because I'm not an engineer, not a full-time engineer. Um, I, I'm a citizen engineer. Um, and, and so anything that makes my life easier, I appreciate it. Uh, and this definitely does. So here's a look at, at my app um, and I'll, I'll 
spin it up here real quick. Uh, and so on the right here, I'm just in a terminal. And if I interact, I, I have obviously uh, what I need installed. So AIO, Adobe IO is the um, generally the command. And then uh, what I wanna do first is make sure I'm logged in. And so I do auth login, and then it shows me my token. It shows me that, uh, let me make this a little bit bigger so folks can see. There we go, okay. So it says I'm currently in uh, the org that I'm in and the project and the workspace to make sure I'm in the right place, which is great. And then if I clear that out um, and I AIO app run, I can run the app in the Experience Cloud shell even though I haven't deployed it yet. Uh, this, this is workspace I, you're in, Jeff. Yep. How did how did you get that? This is uh, like that window. I I'm sorry, I missed that step. It's just that's, that's okay. So if I go back here to the command line mm -hmm. uh, instructions, right? And so right. if I go to commands, um, then uh, anything to pretty much to do with the app is listed up here at the top with AIO app. Um, and after you you know you use these for a bit. Um, you get pretty familiar with them, um, right. but in no. But the workspace itself, like um, that window that says Firefly Notifications Workspace, to the right side, is that like an extension out of um, Chrome or Firefly Notifications? Yeah, this oh, one. I see. What the digital editor. Yeah, those are just okay. files in. So this is over on the right. This blue is or dark area here. This is all Visual Studio code, my text editor. Kind of. See, because I am not a developer. I don't even know what that is. So right. those, those thank are just you. files uh, in my project. Sorry about Excellent. that. Excellent. OK, cool. Thank yep. you. But there are, within this, uh, the uh, command line tooling, uh, there are uh, commands that you can issue that'll, that'll uh, mm -hmm. let you switch to say from a dev workspace to a staging workspace or switch yep. to different projects on the command line that I thought you were asking about that. Sorry. No worries. Thank you. So, okay. So now I have my app up and running and here is the uh, URL that I need. So I'm just going to copy that and paste that up here and it should be the same thing. Hopefully if, if my browser is cooperating with login, excuse me. Okay, so it should be good. So this is sort of my little sample app. It's, it's not finished yet. Uh, I'm sort of in the middle. And what's happening here is, um, so you can see I'm in the Experience Cloud shell, right? It's, I'm, I'm logged in as my, my test organization. Uh, this lives in the Experience Cloud. Um, and uh, I'm using React Spectrum. So this is a single page app using uh, the component library, React Spectrum. It follows the, the design of, of all of our Experience Cloud products, which is cool. Uh, and then I have uh, two sections that I'm working on uh, for this application. And this is uh, what I call the Firefly Notifications application. And what it does is uh, in this section, it allows you to hook into launch uh, property audit events. And in launch, when, for those that are not familiar, when somebody does work in launch, um, the rules that you, you work on and the tags that you deploy through launch, uh, those exist inside of a property, generally speaking. And a property is just a way to collect your, your stuff in launch uh, for either a specific uh, domain or a group of domains, whatever website uh, that you're using uh, launch on. And so when things happen in that property, we our APIs have uh, audit events. And so if I go here to the, the, plan, the uh, launch um, API docs, uh, the de uh, developer docs, um, you can, it gives you all kinds of information overview about the, the launch API. But if I go to the reference here and I look at audit events, audit events are a way to be notified when something happens. So anytime someone does work on a property or an extension or a data element, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, for example, if it's created or updated or deleted, you can subscribe to those events through callbacks. And a callback, if I create a callback, uh, I'll give you an example, right? I can issue a curl request in my terminal with the appropriate uh, authentication and, and headers, et cetera, and data. Uh, and I can subscribe. So for example, here I can subscribe to library created or library deleted. And in my code, in my front end, so here's my audit events. Uh, and I have a whole bunch of to-dos to in there. So forgive me because it's not finished. 
Um, but here we see the body of my uh, callback uh, and the data that I'm supplying is I'm saying I want for this action, I want to subscribe whenever a launch library is created or updated or deleted uh, in a particular property. And so in my app, the way that works is over here in the application, I have a dropdown. And because my organization is linked to a launch uh, company and a launch property, um, what I do is come over here. Once this loads in the browser, it goes out to launch and says, get me the properties uh, for this company. And so I have a Firefly notifications property, just a, a test. And I'm going to say, okay, I want to subscribe to the events that occur in that uh, library. And so when I click subscribe, it puts, creates that callback and sets it up. And I have a runtime action that is a, that I'm reaching out to to use as the webhook for these particular calls. So when launch, when something happens in launch, those audit events are sent to my callback URL, uh, and and that's how I'll get notified in my app. And so initially, what I did is I created the callback, and I have a callback ID, I have a property ID, I have a link. If I if I click this and I open it, you'll see it should go right to the property. Whoop. I guess I'm not logged in. Oh, that's sorry. This is the <laughs> this is the uh, property link. I guess I have to change that. This is the property link uh, for the API, but not the property link for users. So I need to update that uh, so that when you click on it, you get to the property. Uh, so the thank you, uh, Jerry, for letting me do this <laughs> webinar because I, I just found a bug in my in my program. So beauty of live demos. And you, uh, and you, uh, the subscriptions that we've created are again just what I showed in the code, which is anytime something happens with a library, this is where the notification comes into play. And then if you want to get notified by text, you can enter your phone number. So, uh, JP, what's your what's your number? You're on screen here. What, what's your what's, what's my your number? number? Is let's say. I, should I go get my phone? Am I going to get a little surprise? <laughs> well, get, get your phone. Yeah, grab your phone and uh, you All should right, be right back. Uh, unless everything breaks, then you, you should get a text that just says uh, test. And I, I did not sign you up for a whole bunch of spam lists. Don't worry. Yeah. Cyber Monday. Let's go. Cyber Monday. Whoa, I got I got a bunch of spam immediately. No, I'm kidding. Excellent. This is pretty cool. Firefly notifications right there. There you go. Okay. Very cool. So, so this is through a Twilio uh, service that you you were able to do with the, the SMS. Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. Awesome. So b basically, what what this means is if if let's say we have um, somebody who's working uh, a consultant, for example, uh, who's working on a client's uh, property, and somebody you know is an approver within the client organization. Uh, and something's very time sensitive, the approver can subscribe to text updates. So they see that you've made changes to uh, a library and they can jump in and check them out and approve them uh, so that they get pushed out to production. Just a way to give a notification when something happens in launch. Um, the, the next uh, step is, is uh, data ingestion events. So in uh, the uh, platform for experience platform, we have a way to subscribe to data ingestion events so that uh, one of the things that a lot of data engineers and data analysts and data architects uh, in our clients, they'll, they'll, they do very large batch uh, ingestion of data uh, into platform. And when I say very large, I mean, sort of, you know, breaks your brain size, you know, millions, mm -hmm. tens of millions of customers with many, 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 many columns of data for each row of a customer. And so you end up with a huge quantity and, and the events, if an ingestion uh, event uh, process fails or if it succeeds, or if there's any sort of an issue, uh, I'm, I'm gonna add the ability to subscribe to those uh, through notifications so that it, you can either look here in the UI for updates or you can get a text for those uh, events as well. And so it's just a sample of what you can do with uh, a Firefly application. Um, again, this is just my, you know, sort of uh, uh, diving into Firefly and, and getting familiar with the tooling and the, and the uh, architecture and how the system works. Uh, because like I said at the beginning, I'm, I'm, I'm not coming at this 
as an expert to IO. I'm, I've been learning this stuff over the last you know month or two. So um, just you know wanted to share what I've picked up and and I think it's uh, it's a great project. It's a great way for customers and partners to get custom behavior and custom applications that are uh, built in, built and on and hosted in our uh, infrastructure. Um, so that's that was really it that I had planned for the demo. Um, that, that's that's awesome. Um, yeah. Question around the the so the language that you use to do this development is that JavaScript um, that you're doing the coding or what type of language you're doing? Yeah, good question. So um, the the in terms of working with Firefly, um, the front end or this user interface that you see here, um, I I did this in uh, using React Spectrum. So it's a mm -hmm. React uh, application for the user interface, and then on the back end, these actions that I'm calling. So for example, uh, here's my Twilio action up here. Um, this is a, basically a node application, a node. It's a function that gets exported and run as an Adobe IO runtime action. But in terms from a developer perspective, it's, it's uh, you're basically doing node type uh, development. Got it. So you um, have, I have React on the front end, which is JavaScript, and then uh, the, the action on the back end, which is also uh, JavaScript. But in terms of the front and end. So sorry. I have one question on the front end. Sorry, Jeff. Um, you know, you're using Adobe's own flavor of React, if I understand that, the React spectrum, right? And that's is that what gives you the Adobe look and feel? That's exactly right. And so, if so, okay. when I talked about um, Spectrum, uh, Spectrum itself is our uh, here's Spectrum CSS. And what Spectrum design you had, yeah. yeah. So Spectrum is the design language, the design right. system of Adobe. It's how all Adobe products are guided in terms of look and feel and, and oftentimes behavior. Um, and we, as part of that, we have a CSS, a library uh, a, a CSS that's open source um, for that Spectrum CSS. So if you wanna make a user interface and you don't wanna use React at all, you just want to use plain HTML and CSS and JavaScript. You have the option to use this Spectrum CSS for your oh. styling, um, and and your application will look just like the rest of uh, the Adobe products. Um, That's cool. If and if if you want to, you know, sort of take it next level. If if you need a full like single uh, single page app, we also have React Spectrum, which is a component library. So, uh, it, I thought. It's uh, very handy because you have things like uh, for forms, you have different buttons uh, and you have different form elements like checkboxes. Uh, here's an example, right? Very simple to implement a checkbox, um, checkbox mm. groups, all the different form things that are kind of, you know, pretty forms and buttons, right? Lots of front end developers are, are dealing with forms and buttons. Uh, and so I think, you know, if you're, if you're going to have uh, any sort of a UI on your application, I, I thought, think this makes it easier. But to your point, JP, um, React Spectrum is a component library and does have some uh, differences between just na just regular straight up React. Uh, I, I think a lot of those things are improvements. For uh, example, yeah. there's a, a picker element, if I can find it here, uh, which is, so the drop down that I demonstrated and showed you um, here it is. Uh, so this has some performance optimizations built in that that you would have to design, uh, build into your into your component uh, if you were just using uh, straight up React. Um, so it has some things built in, and they describe those things here. Uh, it gives you like this drop down, and so that's when I was showing you. Where am I? Well, here it is. So my drop down here. This is a picker element, and I'm I'm mm. using the light. Uh, theme instead of the dark theme. Uh, I can change it back here, but here's That's cool. the same picker. Wow. Uh, and it shows you, you know, the items in here and it talks about uh, how you uh, can take advantage of some of the things that are built in. So here's like a fully fleshed out example with data. Um, and then they, uh, so they give you examples. So if you're, if you're not, a, I'm, I'm absolutely not a React guru or any kind of React expert. I would not consider myself a JavaScript expert. 
Um, I've, I've got some, you know, I'm competent with, with the basics uh, in JavaScript and React. So that, that was sort of enough to get going. Um, but I, I think there are a lot of conveniences uh, offered, uh, both the command line tooling that I showed you, the AIO command line tooling, which is great for the Firefly apps, uh, React Spectrum uh, for if you're going to do a React UI. Yeah. Uh, and the, we didn't even talk about the, the uh, templates. Uh, so when you start a project, so if I go back to, here it is. Yeah, so when you're here in the docs and you're talking about you know, creating your first application, um, bootstrapping the application uh, is, is really where a lot of the heavy lifting is done for you. Uh, where a lot of these files that you see that, that Jerry was asking about all these files, I didn't write these all from scratch. Uh, mm. I used the command line tool and it generated pretty much all the files and the folders that I would need to get started with my project. And that's really nice. Saves you a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. I mean, you guys are building like an ecosystem here that, you know, not only lets you connect to AEP products or services, but also helps you build quicker, right? And guides you through. Yeah, it certainly helped me. Uh, I mean, someone who's right. you know, who lives and breathes React and Node every day, all day, probably would would see these things and say, yeah, it's sort of table stakes. But I think they're they're great, and I, I think they help uh, people get started without a doubt. We've had some customers uh, that and some internal folks that really were not experts, and and they developed an app in a couple of days. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm so impressed. Like. Um... And I'm, I'm, I'm also not a developer, but I am intrigued and I'm going to walk away with this. I just texted our CEO just to be like, hey, we need to do an internal, just for fun, a project you're doing on Firefly, just because there is so many things. Some of the use cases you mentioned are, are things that us internally, we have done um, just to solve a problem here and there. So I don't see why we wouldn't do this and make it look pretty if the spectrum is already there and seeing whether it's React or CSS. Uh, it, that's that's sometimes the front end is a, a lot of work, but but it sounds like this is really easy to to just incorporate. So, Jeff, thank you. This has been extremely helpful. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to present it. And like I said, you know the. The I.O. team uh, is, is very interested in having people, you know, who want to sign up to, to help them get involved if they if they see a need. Uh, so anybody who's interested, you know, send me an email or hit me on Twitter, uh, reach out and we'll hook you up with the I.O. folks and, and see if we can get you in going in the in the preview. Absolutely. Absolutely. One thing. One last question, just so that we can wrap it up. Um, the. I think you touched on this, but I want to clarify this. Is the idea here that Project Firefly, not only for like companies can create this internally if they want their own teams to do things, um, but also they're encouraging Adobe partners and developers to come in and create applications that will be available within the exchange program, correct? That's, that's the vision. So I... I... I don't want to step on my words. I, I need to be a little bit careful. So, so first, I don't think that that process that you just described is 100% set in stone, because again, we're still in preview stage. Um, I think some of those decisions still have to be made until in terms of how that will will work. But 100%, the intent is if if a partner or an independent developer wants to develop an application and make that available to customers to use. Yeah, 100%, we, we want to make that happen. I'm not exactly sure where those things will live and what that process is, but since these Firefly applications are provisioned per organization, so say for example, if Softcrylic built an application and they want to make it available to all their clients or to anyone, then those uh, organizations would be provisioned for Firefly and then they could get access to your application that you built for them. 100%. But they, yeah. So there's a question um, Oliver just asked, and I think you might have answered it. Um, he said, can I, as a consultant that doesn't have their, his own access to Adobe, actually build an app for the market? I'm assuming you need like an organization within Adobe, whether it's a, you need like a sandbox at least to, to build that initially, correct? 
So you, you do need a sandbox and you do need access, but we can get you that. So if, if you, as a, as a partner, as a consultant who have customers, if those customers don't currently uh, own any Adobe solutions, or if you're an independent developer uh, and, and you don't currently have access, uh, just reach out to me. Uh, we, we do have a process in place to, to get that spun up. That's awesome. That's great. All right. Uh, I know we're over time. Jeff, thank you so much. I, I've learned a lot and I've, I, I believe uh, whoever listened to this, I think there, there was a lot of goodies in here. So we're going yeah. to um, package this. Uh, we're going to get on our website. We'll include uh, a lot of these links that you shared. And, and I feel like we're going to bring you back, Jeff, at some point, especially when that app is complete, when me and JP have like half a dozen of those where I'm going to automate everything using, using the Firefly, where I just need to, in the morning, come in and just log in and then get crazy dashboards. So I'm going to keep you posted on that one. Sounds good. I appreciate we'll it. We'll use Jerry's number next time. <laughs> 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 all right you guys have a great one thank you so much for attending thanks jeff and, and thank you so here. much thanks all